so tell us um, your name, where you are, and your favorite pony. I am Bessara Rubenstein. I live in Giva Time, which is like really, really close to Tel Aviv. My favorite pony is Twilight. Awesome. And and how did you become a brony? What was your uh, con- conversion story, as you might call it? Um, I had this friend who was really fanatic about My Little Pony, but I ignored her. And then I got really sick for six months, and I got bored, so I started watching, and I just couldn't stop. All right. And as a brony uh, in the fandom, what do you do? What, what, what kinds of contributions do you make to the fandom? I have a Tumblr blog where I uh, reblog a lot of stuff and um, I uh, do reviews on episodes. I do some role playing and I'm currently working with a few friends on the Israeli BronyCon. We hope we'll get everything done by next year. And um, we're working on uh, songs and or we just wish we can make it happen because it's gonna it can be really, really awesome. We have sponsorship and stuff and I if we can do it, it'll be cool. So um as the listeners may or may not be aware, there is a war going on. Um, so just tell us, um, you know, as far as you are aware, uh, you know, what's going on. Just tell us what's happening over there. Well, um, a few weeks ago, three boys were kidnapped and killed. And when the bodies were found... Some lun- some Israeli lunatic decided he can avenge the boys by killing an Arab boy. And then the Hamas decided to bomb us more than the usual, and we decided to defend ourselves. Currently, the IDF is in Gaza finding tunnels and eliminating terrorists, killing them or capturing them, whatever they can do, and they're doing their best not to be too nasty to civilians. All right. And for the benefit of the listeners, the uh, IDF is the Israeli Defense Forces, and they're the ones doing the uh, military work over there right now. Do you feel safe? Where you are in Israel, do you feel like your government the uh, and, and the IDF have, um, you know, an adequate level of control and protection on you as an Israeli citizen in the heartland of Israel? Well, I literally trust the IDF with my life, but I have never felt so safe in Israel since we are surrounded by enemies who are constantly plotting to kill us, even though it sounds a bit paranoid. Um, no, I've never felt safe here. Um, so how close have you been to uh, any visual aspects of the war, such as explosions or seen any rockets? And, and the reason I ask is because most of, most of the listeners here will um, only really be aware of what's going on from the media, which you know, has pictures of, like, an explosion in a city in the distance or, you know, the little video of the of the um, Hamas coming out of the tunnel like cockroaches. How close to any of that have you been? What have you seen? I've seen the Iron Dome bomb a bomb, like, really close, just above where my boyfriend lives. It was scary, but cool. So... How do you feel about the people in Gaza who uh, are are not associated with Hamas, but are still being displaced, injured, and killed as a result of um, the war uh, and and the uh, 
all the fighting that's going on, especially near that area. I'm really, really sorry for them, but Israel can't control what happens there, especially since Hamas is using them as human shields. They put their they put their bombs underneath hospitals and schools. They used little children to dig their tunnels. They have these huge, like, 300 at least tunnels that go under all around Israel, and if we wouldn't have found them now, they could have, in a month or, or even in two weeks, just gone around Israel and started killing everyone. And I'm honestly... Israel is doing its best not to hurt civilians, but if the, the Hamas is using them, and the Hamas unfortunately hates us more than it loves its children, so Israel does its best not to hurt civilians. They warn them before bombing a place, but we can't prevent everything from happening and I wish they could run away from there but we can't control it yeah especially you know considering the the Hamas are not doing anything to defend those people very no uh, they're not they're not even they're using them as they're literally using them as human shields when israel wants to bomb a place where they know that the hamas uses as a you know as a conference room or whatever mm -hmm. they warn everyone to get out of the building they warn they do like three warnings and Hamas makes their people stand on the roofs and stay inside. Because wow. so, just to make the world see that Israel is killing innocent people when we have no choice. So, uh, let's see. How do you feel about the um, suggestions that Israel should not be fighting the Hamas? Well, um, I think those people who are suggesting it, either they don't know what's really happening here, or they have some weird uh, perception of what's going on, because Israel has no choice. If Israel won't fight Hamas, the whole Israeli nation could go kaboom they're trying their best to kill us and we have to fight they're leaving us no choice All right uh, yes you were saying something i <laughs> i think that those people are very optimistic or something but they don't know their reality do you think uh, other countries should support Israel in defending itself, especially um, the countries that have pledged themselves as allies to Israel? Definitely. I think Israel needs help right now because our army may be strong, but we're a small country, and as a small country, we don't have a huge army like bigger countries and Israel can use all the help it, it can get for, with fighting the terrorists yeah I'm really sad about all the all the people suggesting that we shouldn't uh, help Israel you know on Facebook I see people saying that stuff it's very disheartening uh, and you know just a little bit of application of logic shows that you know, defending Israel is good for everyone. It's really good for everyone. But then those people probably don't know 
anything because the media is very anti -Sem anti-Semite and very anti-Israel. Yes. Unfortunately, the media and the world, I guess, doesn't like Israel that much. Maybe it's because it's the land of the Jews and people don't like Jews like we saw in the Holocaust. Maybe it's because they just don't like Israel. I don't know why it is, but I do know that whatever you hear is in the news is probably not, it's probably less than half the truth. All right. And uh, that's why I'm glad to have you here interviewing you. Hopefully I'm one of the few um, bits of media, uh, however narrowly focused I generally am on the evening breeze. Hopefully, um, hopefully we're getting closer to the truth than uh, the rest of the mainstream media in the United States is and, and elsewhere in the world. So last one, one more question about um, what's going on over there. How, how do you feel the uh, the messages in My Little Pony could could benefit all the people affected by the war? You know, in the military, um, the Hamas even. Like, if you could show them, you know, get them to actually pay attention to, like, a few episodes of My Little Pony, actually pay attention to the messages in there. How, how do you think that would benefit everything going on over there? Well, I think... I think it would it could affect people for good. I believe in the messages MLP gives and I believe in friendship. Though I doubt the Hamas would listen to any of that because they're blinded with hate. But I wish they I wish they would, really. I think they could really benefit from it. All right. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for uh, for this interview. Um, thank you all for listening to this, and back to our regular programmed slash live slash me being awesome music. <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs>